Hey, how's it going guys? Welcome back to another PS5 jailbreak tutorial. So we can now jailbreak the PS5 using the web browser up to firmware's 5.50. So in this video, I'm going to give you guys a full guide on how to fully set up the PS5 jailbreak on firmware's 5.50 and lower. Basically any firmware from 3.00 up to 5.50. So in order to check your firmware version, before we do that, we're going to head over to our settings on our console. Head down to system, head to system software and go to system software update and settings. It's very important that you disable these two options, download update files automatically and install update files automatically. If these are both enabled, it could allow your console to install the latest firmware without asking your permission first, in which case you could get updated to the latest firmware, which will patch the jailbreak. So make sure both of these options are disabled before you start. Next, we're going to check our firmware version by heading up to console information. And we can see our system software version right here. If we zoom in on this long string of numbers here. So after the first dash, that is your firmware version there. So 04.03. That means my system is on firmware 4.03. So you can follow this if you're on any firmware from 03.00 up to 05.50. So 3.00 to 5.50. Any number in between that range will be jailbreakable. So I'm on 4.03, so my console is within that range and I can jailbreak my console here using this method. Now you can jailbreak the PS5 on even older firmwares, which I already have a guide that shows how to do that from the web browser. It's very similar, but slightly different the way it's loaded and higher firmwares all the way up to 7.61. Although those use different methods, you cannot use the web browser for those. So you can use a Lua exploit or a Blu-ray disc for those but I'll have separate videos on those that I'll leave linked down in the video description once they're available. But if you're on 3.00 to 5.50, using the web browser is the easiest method and most convenient way of jailbreaking your console right now. So what we're gonna do is then head over to our network settings now and head to settings and set up an internet connection. Select whatever network you're normally connected to. So press the options button on it and go to advanced settings, then head down to the DNS settings and switch it from automatic to manual. And then you want to enter this address as your primary DNS. So 62.210.38.117. If this DNS server address ever changes in the future, then the updated address will be in the video description. So just enter that here as your primary DNS. But for now, it's 62.210.38.117. And then we can click OK. So make sure you reconnect back up to your network after adding the DNS settings in there. And what this will do is it will block system updates from being downloaded onto uh, your PS5. And also it will redirect the user guide page here over to an exploit site. Uh, you'll probably get prompted for a certificate. Just say yes to that message and then it will take you over here to this website. And from here, we can access the jailbreak. If for whatever reason you cannot use a custom DNS, because sometimes ISPs block third party DNS servers, in which case you add the DNS and you try and go onto the user guide and it doesn't take you here, you can try signing out and signing back into your profile to refresh and then go back on the user guide and it might work. But if you're still getting things like SSL errors and it's not allowing you to access this page, then you'll just have to switch your DNS settings back to automatic and take the long way around, which is to head to the normal user guide and then navigate through a bunch of links to get onto Google by basically heading out of the user guide to, you know, a link to the PlayStation Store, for instance. And then at the bottom of the page, you'll find like a, a social media link to YouTube. Once you get onto YouTube, you can go to YouTube sign in and then access the privacy and terms options. And that'll take you to Google privacy and terms. I believe there's like a Google link in the top left hand corner. And then you can scroll down to the bottom where there should be a link to Google. Once you get onto Google, you can then search for ES7IN1.site and then that will take you over to this website. So that is the long way around if you're not able to use the third party DNS server. So we just want to make sure we're in the UMTX section here and then we're going to run IDLSOS's exploit host. We have two versions, UMTX and UMTX2. UMTX2 is the newer, faster version that you can try if you want, but it's still being kind of tested out to see if it's more stable or not. So I'm just going to use the regular UMTX version, but you can use either one of these options, whichever one you prefer. And when we first go on the exploit site, it will start caching the payloads for offline use. So you need to wait for that to complete. And once it's finished, it will tell you to refresh the page. So just hit the options button once it's finished caching and press the reload button and it should say the cache is up to date. And that means there's now a local cached version of the website, which means that if you ever disconnect from the internet, you'll still be able to access the jailbreak via the browser because it will load the local cached version 
instead of the online version. And from here, we can now try and run the jailbreak. So we're going to press X on that. And that's going to go through and try and run the jailbreak here on our console. So we got not enough free system memory. We just click OK. And it will try and rerun it again. So in this case, it crashed my PS5. So this does happen. If it does crash your console, you'll just have to turn it back on, wait for it to reboot, and then head back to the user guide and just repeat the process. Okay, so once it eventually loads successfully, you'll get a bunch of payloads that you can select. And a lot of these do different things on the console, but the main one that we want to run, the main jailbreak payload itself, is called ETA Hen, which is, stands for the Homebrew Enabler, of course. So that is the one that we're going to run first of all here. So we run the Homebrew Enabler, and this can take quite a few seconds before it fully launches. It's got a lot of different background things that it has to start up. So just give it a few seconds to initialize everything and get all the notifications. Once all the notifications eventually disappear, then that means it is fully up and running and you can then close out of the user guide and head back over to our home screen here. So you won't notice anything different immediately after running that payload. However, if we head over to our settings and we scroll down to the debug settings, you should have now an option called ETA Hen Toolbox, which has all of these awesome options built in here. So what we want to do is head down to the install the homebrew store option and press X on that. As long as you have a connection to the network, it should be able to download the homebrew store. So just give it a few seconds to download and install that. And there we go. It is now ready to play. So that's our first homebrew application installed on the PS5. So we can run the homebrew store. And the homebrew store, of course, does exactly what it sounds like. It allows you to download other homebrew applications. So we're just going to get this up and running. And then we can use this to install other homebrew apps. So there we go. So the main homebrew app that we want to also install here is going to be Items Flow. So we're going to press X on that and download and install. And that will get the next, I guess, most important homebrew app installed on the system. And there it goes. Done. Added to downloads. And then it just has to say it's ready to play, which means it's installed. There we go. Now it's done. And then finally, we can also install PS5 Explorer. This one is optional, but I would still recommend it. It's basically a file explorer that gives you full access to the internal storage of your console. So a good thing to have, not necessary, but something that uh, is a good thing to have also installed. And it only takes a few seconds to add it there. So there we go. So once it says it's ready to play, we should be able to just press the options button to close out of the homebrew store. And we now have three homebrew applications installed on our PS5. Okay, so to finalize the setup, we do need to switch over to the computer and download a couple of things. So first of all, we've got this GitHub repo PS5 UMTX jailbreak. I'll leave a link to this in the description. You just want to download this link here. I'll just leave this direct link in the description so you can download the package file. And then we also want to download this package file here as well from the PS5 payload dev repo. Again, links will be in the description. You can just download them directly to your computer. So I've got them copied over here. And what we want to do is put those on the root of a USB drive. So a USB drive that is formatted in XFAT format. Uh, then you'll be able to install them on the PS5 here. Now, just to give a little example of running specific apps as well, I've got a couple of PS4 fake packages. So I've got Minecraft here as a fake package, and I've also got PT as a fake package as well that we can install and run on the PS5. So I'll copy those over to show how to obviously run PS4 applications on the PS5. So we'll copy those over there. And then also I have some PS5 apps as well. PS5 apps are installed and run in a different way using items flow because we don't have the package files that we can install. So package files are like APK files on Android where you can sideload them on the PS5 by installing them from a USB drive as we're about to do here. But PS5 apps cannot be run using the package file method. Instead, we just have the extracted game files or app files in a folder uh, that are all set to run on the PS5. So I will go ahead and run those as well just to give you an example. Obviously, I'll do a more complete guide on exactly how to install and run PS5 apps versus PS4 apps in a future video. So stay tuned to the channel and check the playlist link in the description in order to get all the latest videos. So with that, we can go ahead and eject the USB drive and plug it into one of the back USB ports in the PS5. OK, and on the PS5, we can head over to our settings, go back down to the debug settings and go to package installer. And of course, we want to install our UMTX pages dev media.package. 
So this is basically a web browser shortcut. And then we'll also install the homebrew loader as well. So we'll get both of those packages installed. So these are the ones that I recommend that you definitely install that will be linked in the video description. So the homebrew launcher is a kind of shortcut application to loading homebrew applications from a web browser, which you may need to use for certain homebrew applications. And then also, of course, if we go into the media section, we have the UMTX jailbreak here. So this is just a shortcut that will take you to the web page to run the jailbreak so that you no longer need to go to the user guide every time that you want to access the jailbreak. Because of course, this jailbreak is a tethered jailbreak, which means every time you reboot the PS5, you'll need to run it again. So if you have this shortcut in the media section, you can quickly access it without having to go through the user guide to make it a lot faster to get up and running with the jailbreak after a reboot. So that is the idea behind that. So obviously the other stuff I put on the USB drive is just for demonstration purposes. That will not be linked in the description for obvious reasons, uh, like these PS4 apps here. So we can just go and install all of them and that will go and install them on the console. So this will get our PS4 applications installed. We've got Minecraft ready to use. And then of course, PT as well, also installed. So with ETA Hen running, we should be able to run our PS4 apps no problem. So I can run uh, something like Minecraft here and you can see it launches on the console no problem. Minecraft PS4 edition. So that's how we get our PS4 fake packages installed and running on the PS5. Same with PT. And as you can see here, we also have PT up and running too. This is also working. So with that, we've got our PS4 fake packages successfully running on the PS5. And as for running PS5 apps, those need to be loaded through the items flow application that we installed earlier. So we run this and it gets granted a jailbreak by ETA Hen. And we'll just let it do its first time setup. We can also launch our PS4 apps from within here as well. But to add our PS5 apps that I've got on the USB drive, I can just head into this PS5 app option and then scan for applications. And it should find the ones that I have on my USB drive that were in those folders and I can say yes to add them, and then they're successfully added, and there they are. Those are the three games that I had on my USB, and I can launch them directly from there. Let's launch Biomutant. So this is a PS5 native application here, and we can launch it from Items Flow. Okay, and you can see we're now up and running with the game. It says transfer PS4 system save, so that shows we are indeed on the PS5 native version of the game here and it is running here on our PS5. Okay, so as I mentioned earlier, this is a tethered jailbreak, which means when we reboot the PS5, we will lose access to the jailbreak. Now, everything that we've installed up until this point will still be installed, so everything will still be there. However, as you can see here, now that we've rebooted the console, if I try and run any PS5 application, it will not allow me to run it. The same with PS4 applications. It says I have to purchase it from the store. And of course, the same with any homebrew applications. If I try and run a homebrew app, it also will not let me access it. So when you reboot the PS5, all you have to do is head back over to the exploit site through that media shortcut that we created. And then from there, we can go ahead and run the jailbreak. Once the jailbreak runs to completion, we can run ETA Hen again and wait for that to load. And then of course, once we get all of the notifications finished loading for ETA Hen, we can then close out of the web browser and you'll be able to see that we'll now have access again to load our fake packages. I can load Minecraft here, no problem. And for PS5 applications, you still won't be able to run them directly from the home screen until you load Items Flow. So we'll still need to load Items Flow to launch our PS5 applications right now. But once we do that, we'll also be able to load those too. So that's what you have to do after you reboot the PS5. So if you don't want to go through the process of having to rerun the jailbreak when you reboot the console, another option is to put the console into rest mode instead of turning it off. And then when you turn it back on again and recover from rest mode, the jailbreak will still be running. So that's one way you can kind of avoid that situation. But in most cases, you will have to reboot the console at some point. And again, it usually only takes maybe about a minute in most cases to get back up and running with the jailbreak after a restart. Currently, if you want rest mode to work properly, you do need to go into the ETA Hen toolbox right now and disable the option for ETA Hen's auto start. So make sure that option is disabled, which will make you lose the ETA Hen toolbox options when you next load ETA Hen or recover from rest mode. But it will allow it to actually work after recovering from rest mode so that you'll still be able to run your PS4 fake packages and your PS5 game dumps through items flow. And then you can re-enable the toolbox again from within items flow itself. 
uh, using the options button and then using the ETA hen toolbox option. And from there, you'll be able to re-inject the toolbox if you want to get that menu back. Or you can enable the auto start feature as well from items flow so that the next time you load ETA hen, it will load it with the toolbox options. So that's how you jailbreak your PS5 from firmwares 3.0 up to 5.50 using the web browser. There are other exploits on higher firmwares up to 7.61 as mentioned previously that can be ran using things like a modified save file with Lua script and also a Blu-ray version of the exploit that can be loaded through a Blu-ray disc that work up to firmware 7.61. Once those exploits get to the point where we can run things like ETA Hen as we did here, once we are able to do that on those firmwares, I will also have updated guides for how to jailbreak those firmwares too. But anyway, that's going to do it for this one. So hope you guys enjoyed this video or found the information useful. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe. And once again, I'll hopefully see you guys in the next one.